welcome to my YouTube channel. Today is a video I've been wanting to film for a very, very long time, but um, I just feel like I'm finally in the place where I can share it and talk about it with you guys. Um, I'm really nervous <laughs> to tell my story, but I'm also equally as excited to hopefully raise awareness and teach people um, about FA. So without further ado, let's get into my story. So I'll start out from the beginning. I have been a clumsy child my entire life. You can ask anyone in my family. I was always falling and I always landed like straight on my mouth. If I look back at all of my old photos, I always have a busted lip. Um, I never really thought anything of it. I just, I wasn't athletic. I wasn't graceful, I guess is the word, um, <laughs> my entire life. And that was kind of the label I gave myself, was clumsy. And um, I kind of used it as a reason why everything was happening. And I never thought anything of it. Like, I just thought I was the clumsiest person I'd ever met. Um, I got into high school and about my junior year, I really started to be off balance and uncoordinated. I was made fun of for how I walked. I kind of just became the joke, sort of, not, not in a bad way, not in a bullying way, but like, oh, Madison can't walk, don't let Madison carry that, you know? And again, I was just like, ugh, I'm so clumsy. My senior year, I could not walk down the hall without either holding on to a friend or um, leaning against the wall. I would, if I was alone walking down the hallway, I would walk against the wall because I just wasn't stable enough to do it on my own. And I can look back at all of this now and see how it was kind of obvious, but again, at the time, I had no idea what Friedrich's ataxia was. <sighs> and so I remember when at my graduation, my biggest fear, I didn't even care about graduating, like I did not want to fall walking the stage and I did not wear heels. They wouldn't let us wear sneakers, which is what I feel most comfortable in. But um, I wore sandals and I kind of stumbled like right when I got up there and then I was like, Whew. and I took a deep breath and like, I kind of just didn't let myself think. I just wanted to get across the stage. So thankfully it didn't fall then. <laughs> But um, summer after my senior year, so right after I graduated high school, I went to Washington State. Um, my ex-boyfriend now, but back then uh, I was going on a trip to see him for two weeks and we went hiking. I almost fell off the mountain. It was so terrifying. I was slipping everywhere. I was just so uncoordinated and unbalanced and throughout the whole trail. And um, we went back and I kind of tried to put it behind me, but um, his mom is a physical therapist and she kind of saw the whole time I was there, it was really difficult for me to go downstairs. 
to just walk in general is getting really difficult and um she is the one that oh hi she's the one that kind of helped me you know maybe you should get distracted out maybe you should go see if there's something going on and so I went home and I I had a, like a yearly checkup uh coming up like that next week or something and I decided I was gonna tell him about my balance issues and that's just kind of how it all started um I told him about my worries about my balance and stuff and he was like because when he sees me I'm just sitting I'm not walking really and um he had me do all of these balance tests like touch my nose all that stuff and um follow his eyes touch his finger and then he had me walk for him and I failed all of the balance tests and he was very concerned and so I went and got an MRI that day. I remember being terrified. <laughs> um, it was very scary and uh, they actually called me back and said they wanted another MRI. Said that they thought my spinal cord was really narrow back at the time and um that of course worried me and my parents i got a second mri done so it was august 2019 and i was living alone in round rock starting college so like <laughs> trying to live my life and be normal even though I kind of had this you know just constant fear in the back of my mind like what is wrong with me so I went and saw my neurologist and he kind of diagnosed me with ataxia just ataxia then um so that's like issues with my gait like how I walk and stuff like it's kind of like this is awful maybe I'll walk for you at the end of this video so at first he wanted to do all of these tests to see if it was a vitamin deficiency something else with my blood so I had all this blood work done and I was kind of praying that's what it was because if it was because of a vitamin deficiency, I could just take a supplement. I could take medicine and help it out. But, of course, my blood came back completely normal. All the results were negative. Um, and so, he was like, the next step is genetic testing to see if you're disorder is genetic and it was like right when COVID hit like March April and so we had a virtual meeting with my geneticist and she like she talked to me and told me that she was going to test for all these different types of ataxia to see what mine was and and I think it was Two weeks later, I had my blood work done again, but this was genetic testing, and so they like sent it off to the lab or whatever, and it took about four or six weeks or something, but it was June when she called me, and I was alone in my apartment in Round Rock and she told me I had Friedrich's ataxia. She said that this is a rare disorder but 
the type of ataxia I have is the most common. Um, it occurs in 1 in 50,000 people. It's genetic and there's no cure. Um, it was really hard to hear and I was alone and I just prayed to God <laughs> and I was like, why? <laughs> We are not getting emotional. So, um, that was really hard. It was. Um, so I did what any person would do right after she hung up with me. I googled it. Do not google it. <laughs> um, I just saw that. Within 10 to 20 years, you'd be in a wheelchair. Um, the mortality rate. Is, it's kind of the worst facts. And anyway, later on, she had me meet with her in person. And she talked to me and told me all about FA and stuff. It's a progressive disorder that is genetic so both of my pa I'll do this in the most simple way I can but um we all have a gene called frutaxin and my parents had like a mutated gene both of them it takes both of them to have it so they both had a mutated gene and if they both have it there's one in four chances that they're children can have it and I have it so um I pray to God every day that my siblings don't have it and they never will neither of them are symptomatic and they don't really want you to get genetic testing until you're 18 um if you're not symptomatic Friedrich's ataxia is a neurological disorder that affects my balance, coordination, my speech, my heart, um, my muscles, things like that. It doesn't affect me cognitively, like I can think and reason and Praise God for that, but um, it's progressive, so as time goes on, my nerves in my arms and legs will slowly degenerate and stop working, and pretty much, um, it gets harder every day, I'm not gonna lie to walk and be balanced and but I'm going to keep fighting it and I'm not going to give up. I work out every single day because that is the best thing you can do to keep yourself strong. Physical therapy and occupational therapy have completely changed my life. They've made me feel so strong. They've done nothing but be there for me. I love my therapist with, like, their family. And, um, they've kind of just been with me throughout this whole thing. Um, it's now February of 2021, and so I've been going there for, like, a year or so. So after I was officially diagnosed with the FA, I was set up with a team. I'm so thankful I have the best doctor ever. He set me up with a cardiologist, a heart doctor, and a ophthalmologist, which is an eye doctor, and of course my neurologist, and then him as my primary care. And I see all of them, hopefully, just once a year for a checkup to keep everything in check because 
Um, I am high risk for um, cardiomyopathy, I think is how you say it, which is like thickening of the heart muscle. And so I get that monitored every six months. I avoided my diagnosis for a very long time. I only told, of course, my family and my very close friends, but I didn't want people to treat me differently or, I don't know, I just, I still wanted to be just Madison before my diagnosis because it's not who I am. Well, I got diagnosed in June and I finally made the decision to share my story on social media. I think it was right after Christmas. Yeah. So December. June to December. I didn't really tell anyone. Um, and I really didn't let myself accept it. I went through a hell of a lot of stuff um, in 2020. Uh, right after I got my diagnosis, I went through a breakup. I um, failed out of my sonography program. <laughs> I And so, I was trying to cope with all of that while also trying to accept that I now have a rare disease and it just it really didn't work out the best for me. I struggled a lot, a lot, a lot in 2020, but um, I started going to emotional therapy highly recommend and I have gotten so much better just learning how to cope with everything I've been through and also coping daily with having FA. I have never been in a better place than I am right now. I know it's hard after everything I've just shared to say that but I am I am so happy so flash forward to now um, it's February 2021 I have gone to therapy I'm continuing to do physical and occupational therapy once a week just to hold me accountable and keep me strong I have moved home with my parents. I feel a lot safer here. Um, if I fell or if something happened, I'm happier being surrounded by my family every single day. It means the world to me. I'm super happy to have my dogs. Um, who sleep with me every night. <laughs> and I'm also very happy because I have made friends with F.A. sharing my story. I cannot tell you how comforting it is to know that you are not alone because I thought I was alone for six months, um, maybe even longer than that before I got officially diagnosed. I, I really thought I was alone. And sharing my story, I have met some of the greatest people. I met, I've met i met them virtually. I've not met them in person. I hope one day I can, but they are so kind and motivating and they inspire me every day to keep going. I'm doing online school. I am a psychology major now. Uh, much less of a physical challenge and um, more of a mental one. <laughs> um, I love it so, so much. My plans are to one day be a therapist and just help people in general with whatever they're dealing with because I now know from experience how crippling anxiety and depression can be 
and I've overcame that and I want to help other people learn to cope in healthy ways like my therapist helped me. I'm so grateful. I know it wasn't my plan that I had for myself, but I do truly believe that this is God's plan for me. And I'm going to try the best to fulfill my purpose and help other people the best I can. Um, and live a happier life, as well as raise awareness for Friedrich's ataxia so I can help people find a cure. Because FA is just a part of me. It doesn't define me and who I am. Um, so yeah, <laughs> I'm so thankful for each of you that clicked on this video. I'm going to leave information about F.A. down below, so if you want to educate yourself more about it and, you know, learn what you can do to help, I will leave those down below. So thank you guys for watching. I'm sure it was kind of all over the place. I didn't really have a set plan for how I was going to tell the story, and I hope I didn't leave anything out too important. This was such a big season of change and so I was like, I want to remember this. And so I picked up the camera and this will be my fourth video. I'm hoping to post it on Rare Disease Day. Um, it'll be my first Rare Disease Day <laughs> where I knew I had a rare disease. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, don't forget to leave a like, leave a comment, and subscribe. All of my videos won't be this deep. <laughs> That's it. Enzo, you have anything to say? Thank y'all for watching. Bye! <laughs>